Can you trust your local computer shop not to look through your photos and videos when you send your phone or your laptop in for repair? Well, I took my laptop into three computer shops to see what would happen and the results were horrifying. On my laptop, I put a bunch of pictures and a bunch of videos. Some were like regular and others were a bit more, oh, should we say, risque. Uh, don't worry, they were all stock photos and stock videos and nothing that I just happened to grab from somewhere online. Now the challenge was to find some software that would snap secret screenshots every time something was done on the computer. For that, I use the Step Recorder Utility. This is a utility that's built right into Windows and you would typically use this if you wanna show someone how to do something on your computer, like this. This is what the report looks like. Anything that is highlighted or anything that has got this green line around it means that's where somebody clicked. I clicked on the search bar, I typed their notepad, and you can see notepad is open, shows you what the application is, and I wrote, this is a test. Everything is logged. The problem was that I couldn't have this big recording button. I mean, even the dumbest technician would see that. So I wrote a little PowerShell script to hide it. Okay, so it's currently running. You can see there's no record button anywhere. I'm just gonna go and open up one of the photos. I'm gonna close it. Let's see if that actually saves the file. Now, it looks like nothing happened, but actually I now have a zip file and inside it contains everything that was just clicked on. And that is how we're gonna catch them if they do something wrong. Now, to be clear, what should happen is the technician should find the model number of the laptop, maybe look up how much RAM or memory the computer currently has. There would be zero reasons to open up photos or videos just to check if a computer can be upgraded. So tomorrow, we're gonna be heading out. Okay, we've arrived at store number one, hidden cameras on, laptop in hand. Let's go see what happens. I just wanna make this upgradable, that's all. It's well, it just doesn't upgrade the, the, the RAM on this. A few moments later, Okay, that was shop number one. I'm dying to see what happened on this laptop, but I'm not gonna interrupt the program, so let's head over to shop number two. Store number two, camera's ready. Let's see what happens. Very different experience at store number two. Took the laptop to the back, so did the program run or not? Did they do anything? I really wanna know, but we're heading to store number three. One eternity later. Store number three, and that took a lot longer than it should have. I wonder what happened. So yesterday I went to those three computer shops and the moment of truth has arrived. Did shop number one look at any personal data? Let's find out. Let's go see exactly what this person did. All right, so over here, he clicked on the Windows Start. Then he clicked on System. Then over here, he's got the information about this particular computer. Oh, he even highlighted the fact that it's got eight gigs of RAM. And then he closed it down. That's it. This was perfect and the right way to do it. No snooping of the data. Shop number one has passed the privacy test and kept the customer's personal data safe. Maybe I'm a little bit too paranoid. So let's head over to shop number two and see what they did. So I'm not liking what I'm already seeing. All right, so let's go through this again. So in instantly, I mean, he opened up File Explorer, clicks on pictures, as you can see here. There is my photos. And of course he double clicked on that. And oh, look at this. Instead of just opening up each photos, what he did was click on view, and then he made the photos extra large. In other words, he didn't have to open each individual one to be able to see what was in there. All right, that wasn't enough. Went back to the pictures, went to the vacation ones, uh, did the same, made the photos extra large. Okay, and then after that, yep, went to the videos and under the videos, the TikTok funny videos, made those extra large. No need to open any of those, obviously. And then, oh, the model photo shoot. Okay, extra large again. Oh, and now he's interested. And look at that, he actually played one of the videos. How insane 
is that? Wow, massive fail. Looking through the photos and the video is an invasion of privacy. And he knew what he was doing too. By selecting those extra large icons from the view menu, he knew that that would leave no trace. At total fail. So I guess my paranoid brain was right to be paranoid. So now I've just seen the size of the file of shop number three and I'm worried. And shop number three, way too many screenshots for my liking. So let's go see what this person actually did. Once again, straight into file manager, straight onto photos, wasted no time by going into the Tinder one and just open up the photos. Didn't even bother making the icons bigger. Now you can see he closed down this particular photo. And then he went to quick access. Oh, look at that. Um, so it obviously didn't record the section at the bottom here about him watching these videos. But look at that, they're all in the recent file. Highlight all the videos he just watched and then basically click on remove from quick access. If I didn't have this software running, I wouldn't know that that's what he did. Wow, just wow. But just when you think it was bad enough and it cannot get any worse, it does it gets a lot worse. I actually couldn't believe this when I saw this. He's going into NordPass, which is my password manager, which is where I keep all the passwords to all my accounts. Thankfully, I wasn't logged in because if I was, he would have been able to see all my usernames and passwords for absolutely everything, including my credit card information. And look at this, he even tried to log in to NordPass. Thank goodness I was actually signed out. Oh my God, this could have ended very, very badly. And then he just closed everything down. Little shit. I'm sorry, that is absolutely ridiculous and I am beyond furious. So you may have noticed that I've been referring to these as shop number one and shop number two and shop number three and not by their actual store name. The plan was to reveal exactly who was honest and who wasn't. And there's a problem. I contacted shops number two and three who were snooping around the data and I asked for comment for this video. And then I got a bunch of legal papers served to me, along with a statement of something along the lines of, we have strict customer data policies that every employee signs and agrees to. And apparently they're both now conducting an investigation so this doesn't happen again. But whilst they do that, I cannot disclose anything that happened. So not fancying a very hefty fee or spending some time in jail, let's move on. So what should you do if you actually need to take your device in for repair. Obviously, the simplest way is to take all your documents, your photos, your videos, all your sensitive information off the laptop or off the phone and save them to an external drive or save them to your Google Cloud storage. But of course, this is painful and not really super practical. So if you don't wanna do that, and I don't blame you, you can always encrypt the folders on your computer so that only you have the passwords to open up those folders. Personally, I like to use Nord Locker, who are actually today's sponsors. Yes, Nord is the same company that makes NordVPN and NordPass. Did you know that they offer more than just a VPN service? And this is Nord Locker. Now, when the first time you set it up, you have to create yourself a key. And the key is the way to unlock your access into your own locker. Now, you do have a recovery key, and this is the only other way to get into your own locker. If you lose the key and the recovery key, Nord cannot help you because they do not have access to any of your information. Super important to understand that. Now, to create a locker, which is basically the storage unit of where you're gonna put your stuff into, you can choose having it local or having it in the cloud. I'm gonna choose local for this one, and I'm gonna call it sensitive stuff. Click on create, and there it is, just like that. This is a place I can store things in. Now, if I open up my file manager, you can see the locker there, but if you double click on it, absolutely nothing happens. So here I've got an important document. I take that document and I drag and drop it into my sensitive stuff locker. And it says, do you wanna copy it or do you wanna move it? Now, in this case, I'm gonna choose move because I want it private and not to anybody be able to see it. You can see it's gone from the file manager and it's right here within my locker. And of course, you cannot double click on it to see it. Now, you don't have to do these files one by one. Here is our folder that we used on this test. Here's all the Tinder um, images. I can right click on a folder and I can choose convert to locker. So I can take all my photos, my important documents, simply right click on the folder and convert it. And there we go, now I have another locker, one called from Tinder 
and one is the sensitive stuff. So head over to nordvpn.com slash Liron. Check out the complete package. You're going to get secure high-speed VPN. You're going to get malware protection. You're going to get the tracker and ad blocker. You're going to get password manager Nord Pass, which is my favorite. And of course, Nord Locker, so that you can encrypt your sensitive data and keep it out of the eyes of the people who do not need access to it. And now that you've encrypted your sensitive photos, remember to log out of your password manager, out of email, and out of your social media before you take your device in. And it sounds more of a mission than it's worth, but if you have Nord Pass, it really is simple to log back in when you get your computer back as Nord Pass simply puts in the username and passwords for you. At the end of the day, it's all about trust. After this experiment, these repair shops have lost my trust. It's the same thing happens when you want to buy a used phone. How can you trust the person selling the phone that he isn't selling you a stolen phone or a defective phone? Well, for that, I made a video that's right over here. So let's head over to that video. Let's go.